I just wanted to, to highlight a couple of things on, on uh, Aurora. So this is the, the, the new relational database engine that we released. And uh, it came from the, from the fact that when we've been uh, creating and, and launching RDS, and as we evolved RDS, we saw many practices on architecture that basically came down to, uh, to the problem that uh, relational databases as, as they exist today are monolithic architectures. And even if you go to models like uh, uh, sharded models where you have like uh, multiple replicas or different shards of a relational database, it's still a share nothing architecture. So uh, you have to uh, keep in mind that if you lose a node, uh, you have to like, uh, protect this node or, able, or replicate this node. So uh, you see that a relational database is schematically like a, a stack of four different layers, like the SQL, uh, SQL engine, the transaction engine, and so on. And those are not shared across, uh, uh, across the whole cluster. You have to manage everything on your application when you, when you need to scale. Obviously, the, the other problem is that if you need to scale, you have to add boxes. So it's, it's definitely not the most granular way to, to grow a database. And well, I'll not go back to this, uh, to this whole discussion because this is what started uh, NoSQL databases. Um, but at the end, the, the question for Amazon was, um, OK, we have DynamoDB. Um, we have all the products like this. But we still need relational databases for many things, like for transactions, for complex queries, and so on. And Redshift is, uh, is something that is more a data warehouse. It's more for reading information. It's not to write information. So the question was, from an, from an engineering perspective, if you want to completely rebuild relational databases today, because it's, it's, a, it's a technology that, comes, that started in the, in the 70s, right? So if you, if you rebuild the relational databases today, how you, will, how you will do it? So there's things that you are going to completely throw away, like the storing mechanism which has been built for like uh, single nodes, and all those that you're going to keep, like uh, uh, SQL processing. Because, for example, um, Aurora is, uh, is uh, MySQL compatible. So if you have applications that run on uh, MySQL or that are uh, using MariaDB, you can like, put a drop-in replacement with uh, Aurora. It's going gonna, it's gonna to work. Now, to give you more details about the, the, the underlying architecture of uh, Aurora, basically what we extracted is the storage, the logging, and the caching mechanism that we, that we distributed on, on multiple nodes. And, uh, and the rest, Aurora itself, is built on, uh, on other Amazon Web Services components, such as, uh, such as S3 for the, for the replication, and so on. Now, talking about the replication, uh, Aurora is highly available by default, because uh, we, we, um, we do a six-way replication across three availability zones. So there's always a, a Chrome of uh, four copies of, the data, of your data out of six. And uh, this architecture, for example, allows us to, to sustain and to recover data, uh, the, the databases, even if, for example, we lose three copies of the data. So uh, even with three copies lost, we can recreate the, the whole cluster and, uh, and, and keep consistency in your, in your application. What's important, and I'll, I'll go quickly to the demo, is, uh, um, is the crash recovery. Because by completely separating the logging mechanism and the, the replay of the log from the, from the storage engine, basically you can have a more granular way to recreate a database. And you can parallelize uh, the, the recreation of the logs. You don't have to do it like, for example, in MySQL, that is the log is sequential. So you have only one thread that can recreate the log, because basically you're adding layers and layers on top of your data. You have to, to follow the same time order. With, uh, uh, with Aurora, you can, uh, you can def definitely chunk the logs and re-execute the logs in a, in a parallel way, which allows you definitely to recover nodes way, way faster. I'm going to show you some, some performance metrics uh, at the end. But it's not only for the storage, it's also for the, for the caches. So um, a new node in Lambda can be started with a, a cache that is uh, uh, already warm. And an uh, interesting feature, if you want to test everything, is that we added a couple of SQL queries that are specific to Aurora. This is perhaps the only SQL queries that we have specific to, to this engine that allows you to simulate failures. OK, so you, do a, a, you open a, a SQL client, you connect to Aurora, and you with those commands, you can simulate uh, the crash of a node, you can simulate the crash of a disk, and so on. So, and you see the impact uh, uh, on your application. OK, so 
the main point uh, I think for you and, and uh, also uh, at the beginning was for me is that uh, Aurora is uh, extremely simple to use. Uh, perhaps it's the same point that Dennis presented just before me, that is uh, uh, machine learning by itself is something that can be, can be complex to do and, and scale and operate, but the Amazon machine learning service makes it easy for developers to add predictions. So Aurora is the same, that is if you, if you look at the diagrams that I show you, yes, like having a four and six quorum uh, data replication mechanism can be complex to, to maintain, but the, the whole point is Aura is very, very simple to use because it runs on Amazon RDS. Okay, so um, let me clarify this. So I'll, I'll, go back to the, I'll go back to the console and I'm going to, uh, to the service RDS. So uh, for those who don't know, RDS stands for uh, Relational Database Service. Um, perhaps you already use Amazon RDS when you create a new relational database. So I have, a, I have a couple running. So when you create a new database, you select the engine. So MySQL, PostgreSQL, Oracle, SQL Server, and then you, you, you fine tune the parameters. And Aurora is a new engine on the, on the choice of engines that RDS can launch, which means that all the features you have on, uh, on RDS, such as uh, the ability to take uh, snapshots, uh, uh, to recover uh, databases, to, to create copies of, uh, of uh, database instances, and so on, they are also available on, uh, on Aurora. So um, to create an Aurora cluster it's, uh, is a pretty straightforward. So first, you choose the, the database instance class. So I'm going to choose the, uh, the Earth, uh, Earth3 large. Then I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave the multi-AZ deployment by default. I'm just doing a, a, a quick test. So the, the database identifier, I'm gonna do TLV uh, demo. Admin. Okay. Uh, so I created the, uh, the master account. And then I just uh, choose in which uh, VPC I'm gonna deploy uh, Aurora. So I have one that is, uh, that is already created. The thing you have to keep in mind is that for Aurora, you, you can only run the database in a VPC that, that spans two availability zones. Okay, this is for the, uh, for the, for the replication mechanisms. And uh, uh, obviously, if you have two availability zones, so you have to have like two, uh, two sub-networks um, uh, that span those, uh, those availability zones. So I'm, uh, I'm running on this VPC. I have a security group that is uh, already created. So as you can see here, I'm going to change the, uh, the IP address so we're going to be able to connect from, from this machine to the, uh, uh, to the Aurora cluster. And then basically, it's just the same parameters that you will see, for example, in, uh, in MySQL, in Oracle, or in SQL Server, uh, just the, the cluster identifier that you can, uh, that you can add, uh, uh, and uh, the, the databases that you, can, uh, that you are going to have inside the, inside the cluster. So you can leave this completely blank because you're going to be able to create new schemas and new, and new, uh, and new databases uh, uh, on the run. And then for those of you who already know uh, Amazon RDS, you will see here the same parameters you have for other relational database engines, uh, the maintenance uh, a window, and, uh, and the backup retention. So that's, uh, the, that's pretty much it. So um, this operation is going gonna, is gonna to take something like uh, uh, five to 10 minutes to, to start this cluster. So I have one already available that I created uh, uh, a couple of days ago. So it's roughly just the, same, uh, the same cluster. And to connect to it, uh, what, I'm, uh, what I wanted to show you is that um, what I'm going to do is go to the security group allow my IP address, and then I'm going to use something like MySQL Workbench or even like the command line interface on, on MySQL in order to, uh, to access this. So going back to the, to the security groups, so I'm going to Amazon VPC, and I'm going to allow the access of my IP address so I can remotely manage the, the cluster. Okay, so, so this is the, the security group where the, the cluster is running. So you see here for the inbound rules, um, I have just two, uh, two ports that are allowed, MySQL and SSH. I can uh, here just set my IP address. Okay, so now going back to Amazon RDS, 
I just need the name of the um, of the Aurora cluster. So the other one is still created. So let's let's take this. Okay, and now I'm just launching MySQL Workbench. I'm going to create a new a new connection. Exactly, my, my point is it's it's exactly as if you were connecting to a, My, a MySQL database. Okay, so the host name is this one and. <laughs> okay. Um, no, no, it's not the same. This is another cluster that I created the other day, so it's not, it's not the same credential. Uh, I think it was. Here you go. Okay, so it wasn't the right uh, the right password. I'm gonna. Okay, I'll, I'll test the password uh, uh, after. Let me let me go back to the a couple of points that I that I wanted to uh, to mention before. So, um, as you will perhaps see yourself if you test it, um, the Aurora allows you to to work exactly the same way you will work with the uh, with the MySQL database, but all, with all the added features that I showed you in the in terms of uh, durability. Now, the other thing is. The main reason why we also wanted to build uh, Aurora is because of the, the processing speed. Because today, if you want to have like an extremely fast relational database on, uh, um, on Amazon Web Services, there's, there's different architectures to do it. But uh, let's say that you need a database that does something like, I don't know, uh, 80,000 IOPS uh, uh, per second. So you could build that with uh, uh, provision IOPS CBS volumes, but you're, you're going to have to shard and scale uh, and distribute many of those. So it can be a bit daunting to, uh, uh, to, to sustain such a, such a cluster, especially when you're going to do uh, snapshots. You're going to have to freeze and flush all the volumes and then take consistent snapshots. So the other way to do it is to take two very big EC2 instances. Uh, the ones with uh, uh, with uh, big SSD volumes on it, and uh, so the the large C4 instances can give you something like 100,000 IOPS, but on ephemeral storage. So if the if you lose the EC2 instance, you lose the database. Not a good idea. So usually, what customers do is they create two of those big instances and they do like a master-master replication between them. So they can have like a relational databases that can provide something like 80,000 or 100,000 IOPS. Now the other option now is obviously to use uh, uh, to use Aurora. So the the test we did. So this is a, a, a screenshot of the of the console, is the, uh, the the MySQL stress test that you can find on the on the MySQL website. So uh, it runs with uh, uh, with the, this cluster. So this is the the second uh, cluster that uh, uh, that you have on uh, on the Aurora engine, and here you see that. Uh, for example, this cluster was uh, was able to sustain uh, half a million selects per second with the 1,000 database connections uh, concurrently. So half a million selects per second is, is all already something that is uh, that is quite huge for uh, for a relational database. But if you look at also the replication lag, uh, this is also an interesting feature because uh, you see the the maximum uh, replication lag here. Is at uh, is at seven milliseconds during this uh, during this stress test, and uh, so the replication lag uh, was uh, at seven milliseconds while uh, while the cluster was doing thirteen thousand updates per second. So again, this is something that um, I don't know if those numbers are impressive if you are not from the database uh, uh, from the database world. But uh, but they should be. Otherwise, you can you can try to uh, to get to those uh, to to those numbers. Um, the good news now is that the uh, uh, the Aurora preview is also available here in Europe. So if you have, for example, um, um, RDS instance which is running in Ireland, what you can do is you take a snapshot of your RDS instance, and you can recreate an Aurora cluster based on the snapshot of this instance. Otherwise, if for example you have uh, MySQL database um, on your premises. You can do a MySQL database dump, right? So you collect the file, and uh, you just upload this dump into into an uh, EC2 instance, and you re-inject the dump into Aurora exactly with exact uh, with the same tools uh, that you will use for for MySQL. Uh, the third mechanism to import data into into Aurora is to set up a, a master-slave replication, which also works. 
So you can have a, a, a database that is, uh, for example, on your premises, that is uh, replicating the, uh, the tables and all the data into an Aurora cluster. Once the replication is done, you can cut, uh, you can cut the mechanism and you're, you're good to go. So um, the service is still in preview, so you, you have to go to the website of Aurora. So aws.amazon.com slash, uh, slash Aurora will, will also work. Uh, you, you give the, your, your account ID, we will, uh, in um, just a couple of days or perhaps less than a week, we're gonna give you access to the, to the preview, which runs on, uh, on those three regions. And the full availability of the service is gonna come soon. So with that, we are still around if you need uh, any information on Aurora, and uh, I'll recover the password and I can do you a, a full demo if you come at the booth. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.